Hello everyone and welcome to the Gunpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today's review of the 2008 Master Grade Infinite Justice Gundam is brought to you by those wonderful people over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Gunpla and Plamo. With a vast catalog, a private warehouse option, and flat rate shipping in the US and Canada, you can't beat what Canadian Gundam has to offer. When placing your next order, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA NETWORK to save 10% off. The ZGMF X19A Infinite Justice Gundam from Gundam Seed Destiny is a close quarters combat focused mobile suit piloted by Athrin Zala. This is the successor unit to the ZGMF X09A Justice Gundam from Gundam Seed, and this mobile suit features a similar color scheme and general silhouette. While its focus on melee weaponry is a big departure from the original Justice Gundam's armory, Atherin still pilots it with great skill. The Infinite Justice Gundam is the real star of the show, taking down Luna Maria Hawk in the ZGMF X56S-A Force Impulse Gundam, Shin Asuka's ZGMF X42S Destiny Gundam, and the LHMBB01 Minerva. That's right, the main hero ship, the original Hero Gundam, and the titular mobile suit for the series. The Infinite Justice by far has the best service record of any of the mobile suits from Gundam Seed. But that may not make it your favorite. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite mobile suit from the Gundam Seed universe is. The inner frame of this Master Grade is a nice silver color. While it's not quite metallic, it is still more striking than the regular gray inner frame we're used to. It's very mechanical looking, which helps articulate the inner details that do get to shine through. Well, that's really not a lot outside the elbows and knees. We do get some nice little vents on the lower legs that get to shine through that armor. If you choose to leave some parts off or take photos of the inner frame itself, you're not going to be disappointed. The inner frame is packed with a ton of surface detail, as pretty much any Master Grade is. And it's almost a shame to cover it up with this coloration in this amount of detail. It really is, in its own right, very interesting to look at. The main attraction, though, are the legs. They are by far the most interesting in terms of surface detailing on the entirety of the frame. And of course, we get to see the little unpainted Atherin in the cockpit as he circles around. We also, of course, get a regular Atherin figurine that's not on display here. Once we get the armor on, we're treated to one of the most unique color schemes in all of Gundam. But yes, yeah, sure, it's a play on the all red unit, but there's just enough color variation throughout the entire kit and surface detail to break up the relatively large portions of the pale red used in this mobile suit. Really honestly, the forearms are the biggest culprit here, but there's enough difference in the sculpts and the heights of the plastic that it doesn't look plain. The sculpt in general is pretty awesome, it's got a good variety of clean panel lining opportunities and solid proportions, nothing really looks too big or too small for where it is. And speaking of proportions, this Master Grade really hit the nail on the head in every aspect possible. While I like the hyper stylized look of the Justice 2.0, I feel like this really doesn't need that treatment. While I would absolutely be excited for an Infinite Justice 2.0, 100%. I'm really not seeing why this needs a 2.0 right now. Yes, there are things that could be improved, but generally speaking, there's a lot more that need 2.0s before this kit. In the unboxing, I did think the green was a little bit too tame, but once we get the kit all together, it actually feels right at home. It does still stick out, but in a very subtle way, which really matches the entirety of this color scheme. None of the colors are really punching you in the face. They're not too loud. Aside from the color blending on this kit, and it really not being subtle in terms of its choice, everything blends together well enough that nothing is really the main focus. Everything seems cohesive and makes sense and flows into one another. We even get a fair amount of the green overall over the entire body. We have it in the chest, of course, but you also get it in the vents on the front skirts and the back of the legs, which you didn't get on the high grade, so that's kind of a nice little change. I will point out that yes, I, I did technically lose the uh, chest Vulcans, and I really couldn't stand the look of just one being in, 
So, uh, they're not there. They disappear in the void if you lose them, regardless whether or not you're in a desk, on carpet, on hardwood floor. They're just so small that it's almost impossible to find them. So, they're not here, but they still look fine. Speaking of Vulcans on the chest, though, the ones on the bottom side of the chest are molded in an entirely clear plastic, which is somewhat strange, but when the light hits them just right, they do kind of shine like a silver. I don't know why these weren't molded in the same color as the inner frame, though, because that would have been fine. This would have looked really good there, but to each their own, it's clear plastic. If you want to paint it, great. If not, honestly, it's not that distracting. One thing I love that infuriates me to no end on this kit is the shield. The blue glimmering effect part is phenomenal. I love it. Not only is it eye-catching, but it's a nice deep color that really helps distinguish it from the mobile suit. All that being said though, the connection point is awful. I will rant about it in a little bit more detail here in just a moment when we're talking about posing, but this is probably one of the worst connections I think I've felt on anything, and it just sucks that it's part of such a cool effect. With regards to the much newer high-grade Cosmic Era release though, when we have them back to back, we see just how different they are in terms of their coloration. When I was building this, I didn't really think they were going to be that different, but the high grade Cosmic Era goes for a deep purple, if you will, and the Master Grade Ops for a more pale red. I think the line art's probably in between these two, honestly, but I think both of them really take on their color scheme in a way that doesn't make either one look out of place. Neither of them really invalidate each other either. We'll talk about it a little bit more in the posing, but you know, with a lot of releases, typically the Master Grade is the better option. And while this Master Grade has a ton to offer, the High Grade Cosmic Era holds its own. It's not something that's irrelevant in this conversation. I do feel that the sculpt on the Master Grade is a little bit better, however that extra detailing does lead to the uh, head having limited articulation by comparison just because there's a collar there and the back of the head does run into it. You could probably get around this with a little sanding but I, I'm not going to mess with it so it's just something to be aware of. It does limit you just a little. In terms of overall visual appeal though I feel like the Master Grade wins out but in terms of posing the High Grade Cosmic Era is at least, if not the same, a little bit better in terms of actually getting it into position. With the smaller, lighter, high grade, it's a lot easier to pull off the high flying kicking poses that this suit is known for. And I think Bandai might have learned a little bit from this release when making that high grade, thinking, oh, we'll use kind of the same basic concept for the, the hips but we'll make things a little lighter here and there just so we can actually get a good amount of kick out of it instead of just kind of a weird leg sticking out in the middle of nowhere. That is one thing I do have to say the high grade does better it as well is it has a much better ab crunch. Now of course there's not as much plastic, it's not as much weight, but generally speaking the ab crunch for something like this is super important because the kick is going to need a little bit of ab crunch to sell its motion. You can still get by with the Master Grade having a more limited range of motion in the torso, but it does kind of when you have them side by side really kind of detract from what the Master Grade has to offer. Both can still get into fairly impressive poses, but I would say the high grade wins out in posing, but that's just my personal opinion, honestly. Once you start posing the Master Grade around though, you'll notice the immediate need for a stand and an action base. And it kills me that they didn't include one. For something like the Master Grade Strike Freedom that came out pretty close around to this, it got a stand. Why this didn't get a stand, I have no absolute idea. It would have benefited so much, but no stand, so keep in mind you'll probably have to buy one. While I love the variety of beam effects in the High Grade Cosmic Era version though, the Master Grade outshines it in almost every way. I wanted to put on display here the RQM55 Shining Edge Beam Boomerang from the MX2002 Carrier Beam Shield, one of the MRQ15A Griffin Beam Blades on the legs, and both of the MRQX Griffin 2 Beam Blades on the Fatum's wings. That's a lot of words. 
All of the technical babble aside, it's clear to see that the beam effects look really good. I was a little underwhelmed with the beam boomerang on the high grade, but I legitimately feel like here on the master grade, it's really solid for a minor weapon that you know generally people aren't going to really pose with. It's nice that it's here, it's an impressive representation, it's fairly big, and it's got quite a bit of sculpting detail down at the bottom of the blade. It's pretty solid, and for something that is dynamic as a boomerang, I think it works. If we tilt the beam emitter down, however, we can still use it as a beam saber, and it holds fairly stably. And honestly, I would honestly rather use it as a beam saber, just because this is a much more interesting beam effect than your standard beam saber effects. That being said, the beam effect isn't necessarily going to outshine these older school master grade destiny style beam saber blades all of these curved glittery beam saber blades from the destiny line hold up really well and i like this variation i think that if you're going to do any variation you're not going to like have just one standard beam saber blade having it different for each line kind of works because then you can mix and match because the pegs will probably be the same and I just think these generally look as like some of the best just basic beam saber blades out there. Once we put it up against the Force Impulse, we'll see the MA M1911 High Energy Beam Rifle and the MA M02G Super Lakota Beam Saber in action. Alongside another Gundam C Destiny Master Grade, we see the Infinite Justice works well with its counterparts, while still contrasting the more traditional Gundam color scheme. One thing I will say is that the lack of a very substantial ab crunch here hinders a lot of the kicking poses that I mentioned earlier. And you have so many other cool accessories that you can get cool poses in, but it just sucks that you don't have the full range of motion to get a lot of kicks in. You can still do it, it's just not perfect. Of course, you can kind of compensate by tilting the stand a little bit, but with the weight of this whole kit, if you've got the backpack attached, it gets a little dicey sometimes. So. Just be sure to be careful and take your time when posing this. Speaking of kicks, I actually do prefer the more curved Griffin Beam Blades on the legs of the High Grade Cosmic Era over the Master Grade. While the Master Grade straight blades work fine and still look really good, I feel that the curve of the Master Grade stands out quite a bit more and gives it a more distinct like kicking sweeping motion, which makes absolutely no sense because the beams aren't affected by any of that, but I think it just generally gives it more of that vibe. If you want, you can also move the Fatum unit and even display it separately of the Infinite Justice if you would like. You can also attach the Beam Sabers together for a Ray Park special. If you decide to throw on the Dry Transfer decals or the Sticker decals, you'll be pretty pleased. I only use two of the regular Sticker decals, but pretty much all of the Dry Transfers just because I love Dry Transfers, man. I am super lazy, and I'm not going to go through the hassle of water slides for most kits, so dry transfers are right up my alley. Sure, they can sometimes leave a little bit of film, but generally they're much, much better than stickers and a lot less of a pain than water slides. The Big Faith logo on the shoulder is probably the most striking for the main body. It's big, it's clear, it breaks up the red of the shoulder. The designation on the other shoulder still looks good, it's just the text isn't quite as big and in your face from a distance. With both of these looking really good, we move down to the front skirts, and they're pretty solid there as well. I do believe I actually put these... no, I think both of these are supposed to go here. I tried to follow as closely to the manual as I could, and I think these are in the right spot. But they still look fine, they're fairly small, so from a distance you'll notice something's there, but it's not going to be incredibly clear until you get up close. I do prefer the decals and the placement on the main body to the Fatum unit though, is they're just, the ones for the Fatum are really big and aren't the easiest to lay flat, so kind of keep that in mind, you'll notice mine are a little wonky, so if you do absolutely use these, uh, they look great, but just be very careful with them. It's still cool that we get a lot of these, and we actually get some interesting kind of specific design placements, I guess, for the Infinite Justice. Having uh, two really interesting stickers on the outsides of both legs that you'll notice when you're in these kicking poses. So once you get everything all decaled up and next to, say, something like the Strike Freedom that also has its uh, dry transfers on, they look great together. 
the contrast of the pale red on the to the blue and the black of the Strike Freedom, it just really looks cool. I did leave the wings down to not only help both of them fit on the display stand that rotates, but also to kind of match the silhouette a little bit more to the Strike Freedom. You lose a lot of the Fatum unit if you're not at an angle, so I thought, yeah, we'll put the Fatum unit down so we actually get a good shot of it. Overall, I really enjoyed this Master Grade and have it displayed right alongside the High Grade Cosmic Era. Both are incredibly solid in their own right, but visually incredibly different representations of an, a very distinct looking suit. While the High Grade Cosmic Era is a little easier to move around, it's really not a night and day difference, so you're not going to just lose your mind posing the Master Grade and it's not going to be just the easiest thing in the world to pose the High Grade version. Outside of losing the little chest Vulcans, the build was incredibly fun and it wasn't too difficult or confusing at times. You do get some interesting complexity out of the kind of me uh, mechanisms used in the backpack for the wings to move up and down and in and out, but nothing really was just frustrating to no end. The visuals are great without the dry transfer decals, but once you stick them on there, they're really cool to look at, and I think they add a very interesting visual flair overall. If you're a fan of the suit, Gundam Sea Destiny, melee suits, or beam effects, this is a solid purchase for you. Of course, if none of that's your cup of tea, no worries, there's a sea of Gunpla out there for you that you can find over on Canadian Gundam, of course. If you have any questions about the build, posing, any of that, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe here. Check out our other content, our other reviewers, the news, of course. And as always, friends, I've been the Spicer here with the Gunplay Network. Please do your best to stay safe and keep on building.